Team Quant Reasoning. Thanks so much for checking out this special video. Uh, this may be the first of a series of videos in nature and the purpose is really to make it kind of an inspirational lifestyle vlog GMAT video because so many of my students underestimate the importance of lifestyle when it comes to achieving their uh, target score. So I decided to put my money where my mouth is and follow my own advice. Here I am out in nature thinking about all things GMAT. Uh, I thought that today could be a good day to uh, talk about right triangles in particular because there's so much to them. So let me find a nice spot to stop and uh, chat and I'll see you on the other side. Future Avi, cue intro. So this is where I decided to stop. You can see I'm uh, right next to a beautiful stream in the middle of an undisclosed location in Toronto, Canada. And this is a good time to remind you that there's a completely free way for you to support this channel. All you have to do is click the thumbs up button right below the video uh, and click the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. So let's talk about right triangles and what makes them special or unique or different from just any old triangle. I guess it's a good time to remind you that for any triangle, really any side of any triangle has to be shorter than the sum of the other two sides and longer than the difference between the other two sides. Uh, by the way, I explain in my book the reasoning behind that, but that's not for this video. See, in a right triangle, it turns out that each leg, meaning not the hypotenuse, but each of the two legs, is not only shorter than the sum of the other two sides and longer than their difference, that's true of any side of any triangle, we can actually say for a leg of a right triangle that it's exactly the square root of the product of the sum of the other two sides and their difference. And if I'm not mistaken, that's actually the definition of a geometric average. So how did I come up with that? Well, it's a direct result of the Pythagorean theorem. Think about it. If the Pythagorean theorem proves that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the two legs, if we subtract one of those squares of legs from both sides of the equation, what do we get? We're left with, on the one side, just a leg squared. And then the other side, we have the hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. But that's a special product. That's a difference of squares. And we know from our special products that that's equal to the difference times the sum. Of course, a geometric average, by definition, is going to be somewhere in between the two things of which it's the average. So this is another kind of neat way to see that, yes, indeed, a leg of a right triangle has to be shorter than the sum of the other two sides and longer than their difference. Now, when it comes to right triangles, there is a little bit of stuff that's worth memorizing. In fact, I would say we, we must memorize. But we can use the difference of squares to help us memorize. It would be a wasted opportunity not to. So let's go through them. Uh, there are two especially special right triangles. Those are the 30-60-90 right triangle and the isosceles right triangle, also known as the 45-45-90 right triangle. And what makes them special? Well, for the first one, the 30, 60, 90, it just so happens that in that particular setup, the short leg is exactly half the length of the hypotenuse. So that's kind of a cool coincidence, and it's absolutely worth memorizing because the GMAT likes to test it. So in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the short leg is exactly half of the hypotenuse, and we can use the Pythagorean theorem to infer the middle side. If the short side is, let's say, one ratio units and the hypotenuse is two ratio units, using that Pythagorean equation, we can find that the longer leg is a square root of three ratio units. The reason I'm talking about ratio units is because we don't know whether our triangle is measured in centimeters, inches, feet, it could be a microscopic triangle, it could be a astronomical triangle, but the ratio holds. So this is all in the world of ratios. Now that second special triangle, the isosceles right triangle, that one is special because two of the sides are equal. 
to one another. So we can say there that if the two legs are one ratio unit and one ratio unit, using again the Pythagorean theorem, we can find that the hypotenuse is the square root of two ratio units. So that's another ratio that we must memorize for right triangles. So once we have those two out of the way, it's time to talk about the Pythagorean triples. So what is a Pythagorean triple? It's, it sounds really scary, I think, but in reality, it's, it's not scary at all. It's just a group of three integers that happen to fit the Pythagorean theorem. So for example, three, four, five. So yep, three, four, and five, they're all integers. And yep, three squared plus four squared happens to equal five squared. So that's what it means to be a Pythagorean triple. It's a set of three integers that fit the Pythagorean equation. Uh, now, because we're in the world of ratios when it comes to triangles, it's not just three, four, and five. You can expand that ratio by any factor and it will still be a Pythagorean triple. So if we expand the ratio by a factor of two, for example, you'll get six, eight, 10. And it's always gonna work out. Six squared plus eight squared happens to equal 10 squared. Let's expand by a factor of three. Okay, so that's nine, 12, 15. We don't have to check it. We just know that nine squared plus 12 squared equals 15 squared because it's an expansion of a Pythagorean triple. So we want to memorize three, four, five, obviously, but we also want to memorize a few of those expansions. So six, eight, 10, nine, 12, 15, maybe one more, 12, 16, 20. Uh, now in the GMAT, you might have, instead of 12, 16, and 20, maybe they'll give you 1,200, 1,600, and 2,000. So you have to recognize that. And you have to say, well, if 12, 16, and 20 is a Pythagorean triple, then an expansion by a factor of 100 is still going to be a Pythagorean triple. Uh, the other Pythagorean triples that we need to memorize are 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, and 7, 24, 25. Now, I mentioned earlier that we want to use the special product to help us memorize these. So I'll show you how I do that for that last one, 7, 24, and 25. How do I use the special product to prove to myself that, yes, indeed, 7 squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared without needing a calculator or without doing a lot of math? Well, I can just subtract 24 squared from both sides. And then what I have is, 25 squared minus 24 squared. That's a difference of squares. I can rewrite that as 25 minus 24 times 25 plus 24. Well, that's just one times 49. And then I ask, okay, is that in fact equal to seven squared? Yes, seven squared is 49. So I just suggest using that special product to prove to yourself each of the Pythagorean triples. Now, I have no idea if doing this in nature is helpful or a distraction. And the only way I can find out is if you let me know in the comments below. So please do so. And if there's a demand for this, I'll turn this into a series and we can go through really everything that one would need to memorize for the GMAT just through this series of videos in nature. So until next time, see you later.